Welcome to the YouTube, or what I call, Dog Time. <laughs> it's been over an entire year since I've done my last Komodo rig build video, and as you can see from this BTS here, a lot has changed since the last one. And this will tie in perfectly with the latest accessory that PortKey sent out to me, their new Key Grip. So for the most part, what you're looking at here in these behind the scenes is the camera rig build that I have been using since about December of last year. And as you'll notice, I no longer have the outrigger handle. I replaced that long ago with this GDU, AKA Global Dynamics United, small Derringer wooden handle. So the main reason for this is the outrigger just made the camera really wide in a rectangular fashion and it's bolted on so you can't easily or quickly pop it off for travel. And over time, I just found the size of the outrigger to be a bit of a nuisance. Well, now the newest option for handles is the port keys key grip. And throughout this video, I'll be showing plenty of BTS from both of those commercial projects that I was the director of photography on. And we just happened to have a couple of our Dog Times Patreon members on set with us. So shout out to both Matt and Miguel. Now, I already did the unboxing and first impressions video on this key grip as an Instagram reel, so be sure you're following me over there at Kid Tech. That's where I drop daily behind the scenes, unboxings, and it's just a really nice way for supporters to keep up with all of my indie filmmaking shenanigans. And then as a bonus, we have completely separate and different content available over on the Dog Times Productions Instagram as well. So be sure to give us a follow over there on either of those pages, especially if you're into behind the scenes and filmmaking tips. <laughs> now, let's start with my review and opinions of this new key grip. I'm gonna tell you guys right off the bat, having worked with this thing on actual real world shoots, it's got a lot of weird little quirks to it. So you are gonna wanna make sure that you watch this entire video, not only to see if this is the right tool for you, but also if you already own this key grip and you're hoping to use it with your Tilta follow focus motors, then believe me when I tell you, the life of your port keys key grip is at stake. But we'll get to all of that in a minute. However, let's start with the cool stuff first, because on the surface, this little key grip is actually pretty cool, and it's not just for Red Komodo users either. This thing is actually compatible with a long list of different cameras. And if your camera does not have the ability for wireless control, well, PortKeys does provide a lot of different options to connect and control your camera via a small cable. But as far as using it with my Red Komodo, the wireless record control is flawless plus having the ability to control basic camera settings and functions all wirelessly in the palm of your hand is, well, very convenient. It's got a really nice OLED screen for programming and it very quickly and easily connects to the Komodo's Wi-Fi signal. First things first, you power the port keys grip with the two batteries that port keys includes in the kit. And if you are an owner of the Tilta Nucleus M, then these little batteries are going to look very familiar to you because they are almost identical to the ones that power your Nucleus M follow focus. Now this is awesome because these batteries do last a very long time and they will easily get you through an entire day shoot and then some. And if you're like me, well then you probably already have a bunch of these batteries lying around anyways. But if you don't, no worries because Porky's does include a dual charger in the kit. Now, a quick side note about these port keys proprietary batteries. They are a tad smaller than the ones that go inside of your Nucleus M. So what this means is the battery door on your key grip will not close if you try to use two of your Tilta M batteries. And that is because there is a locking latch on the inside of the key grip's battery door. So the port keys batteries were made a tad shorter to allow for that locking latch on the inside of the battery compartment. However, if you're still wanting to use your Tilta batteries because you already have an abundance of them, there is still a little workaround to this, which obviously I'm sure you've already thought of. You can just mix and match as long as you're using at least one port keys battery. You just have to keep the port keys battery on the side that the door latch is on so it will actually close and you can still power the key grip. So that may help you in terms of charging and swapping batteries throughout the shoot. However, you're not gonna need more than two of these on a full day at work. Also, I'm well aware that there are plenty of folks out there that are already jumping to the comments to talk about, oh, you shouldn't be mixing different kinds of batteries. But you all should know that at their core, these port keys batteries are still the same exact Li Ion 
18650 3.7 volt battery. And I can take both of the blue port keys batteries and easily put them inside of the Nucleus M. It closes and it still powers off. So it's definitely the same battery. Port keys just had to make them a tad smaller to allow for that locking battery door. But luckily, port keys also has the option to power the key grip with this dummy battery. However, this is an additional purchase of $99. Now, port keys did send me that optional dummy battery as well. So I have used both power solutions on two different commercial shoots. The dummy battery is fine, but it will take up another D tap and it's just more cables added to your rig, which I am never a fan of. And honestly, using the dummy battery would totally defeat the purpose of this key grip being a wireless grip. Also, this specific D-tap cable that Port Keys makes is a little on the annoying side because it is a two-piece cable. So depending on your shooting situation, it could very easily come unplugged. So on the second shoot, I just used these blue Port Keys batteries and they lasted all day. I still have not charged these Port Keys batteries since that last shoot. And here we are weeks later and they're still providing power to the key grip, even still now for this demo and the B-roll for this video. So yes, these little blue Port Keys batteries do last a very, very long time. However, if you plan on using the key grip to control your tilt of follow focus motor, well then you will be forced to use the port keys dummy battery. But more on that in a minute. So let's move on. We've talked enough about batteries. I'm sure I've lost about 3000 of you at this point, which is fine. Only true dog timers survive. So we pop open our locking battery door, which I do want to point out is a really nice feature. I obviously love locking battery doors for well, obvious reasons. So on the bottom of the unit is where you will find the on off switch. One thing I want to point out is if you are powering the key grip via the dummy battery, keep in mind the unit is always on, even when the power switch is set to off. So it's basically always slightly draining small trickle amounts from your V-mount battery, uh, and it may just be another reason to use the blue port keys batteries. <laughs> So here you can watch the boot up time. Now here's one of my favorite things about the key grip. I've only connected the key grip one time to my Komodo and I've never had to reconnect it since. It doesn't matter how many times I power the camera down, how often I turn the key grip on and off, swapping from the dummy battery to the real batteries, days in between, it just instantly connects to my Komodo. I absolutely love that and I really wish port keys could give their secret to all those film lighting apps out there. <laughs> Now, if it is your first time connecting the key grip right out of the box, you will have to tap this little button on here that says mode switch, and that will bring you into the key grip menu. And then you can use this little scroll wheel that's right under your thumb to tap into the Wi-Fi menu. And here you can see your device that you're currently connected to, or if it is brand new out of the box, just simply add a new device. One thing worth mentioning is chances are you will have to change your camera's password because the system inside of the key grip is a numerical password system only. So that may be a little annoying for those of you who use the red control app all the time, because once you change your camera's password to work with the key grip, you will have to go back into your iPad or phone and change the password on there as well. So they all still connect. <laughs> All right, finally, what you've all been waiting for, let's talk about some of the awesome features of this Port Keys key grip. The most notable one being you now have a little record button directly underneath your pointer finger. But something even cooler, in my opinion, cooler than the record control, is this little itty bitty switch directly on the front of the grip that you can use to program three different camera functions of your choice. For example, as you'll see here, I have programmed this key grip to control my camera's white balance, ISO, and the focus motor. So when I push the little front lever all the way to the right, I can now quickly adjust my camera's white balance with my thumb using the little wheel on top of the key grip. Or when I push the front lever all the way to the left, well now I can use the wheel to quickly change my camera's ISO. And when I push the little front lever back to the middle position, now I can use the wheel on the front of the key grip to quickly pull my own focus when the key grip is connected to the tilt to follow focus motor. So this little guy not only controls your camera, but can also control your tilt the nucleus M and even nucleus nano motors. So that is really awesome for one man band kind of shooters, solo guys that are using manual cine lenses. Now I'm gonna put a pin in the whole focus motor connection for now because there's definitely some very important guidelines you need to follow where the life of your key grip is depending on you knowing the proper procedure of how to connect the key grip to the tilt the motor. 
But first, I do wanna show you all the different camera settings that you can program and adjust wirelessly via the key grip. So as you'll see here, if you tap the mode switch button again and scroll down to function, here's where you can program the right, middle, and left positions of that little tiny front lever. And now here you'll see all the different settings that you can program into the key grip. White balance, an AF-MF toggle switch, focusing. So now the focusing tool is if you have electronic lenses, you can pull focus with the little wheel that's on top of the key grip. You just switch your lens to manual override mode and you can pull focus. However, with my Sigma Art 24 to 70 on the Komodo, uh, it was a little wonky. It wasn't exactly a smooth focus pull and it did tend to jump around. So I imagine there's still some kinks for port keys to sort out in a future firmware update. Some other functions you can program are resolution, exposure value, and rocker focus. Now rocker focus is a tool which allows you to change the focus zone using the little joystick on the top of the key grip. But there was not a way that I could find at least with the Komodo anyways, to where you could pull focus to that area once you set the focus zone using the rocker focus tool. So one workaround is also to program the focus tool function to the front lever along with the rocker focus function. So then you can position the focus zone using the rocker tool along with the port keys joystick and then using your finger uh, switch over to the focus tool using the front lever. And then you just push in on the wheel on top of the key grip and the camera will lock on focus to whatever zone you've set using the rocker tool. It's not the perfect solution. It is quite convoluted. I was even getting confused just sitting here regurgitating it to all of you, but you know, it, it is there if you need those options. It's a lot of jumping around though. Me personally, I would much rather be able to do both of those things within the same tool function but I don't know, it could also very well be a limitation of the Komodo. Now, another function you can program into the key grip is the magnify tool. Now, this is really cool, but again, on the Komodo, I do think it is pretty limiting. For one, it doesn't always work, which again, could very well just be a firmware issue, but when it does work, it only punches into the center of the screen. Unfortunately, there's not a way to move the magnification square around the entire frame which again seems like something they should add in a future firmware update as well. Being able to move that magnify square around the entire frame using the little joystick on top of the key grip certainly does seem like a pretty awesome feature, if it was available. <laughs> Moving on with the other programmable functions. They are focus motors, iris, shutter, ISO, frame rates, and finally back to white balance. So there are a lot of options in there allowing you to cater those three functions to whatever specific shoot you happen to be on. For instance, if I was shooting another BMX or skate video, I would definitely program one of those functions to control my frame rates. So at the end of the day, a little tool like this key grip actually pairs really well with a camera like the Red Komodo. Because the Komodo screen doesn't always exactly have the greatest touch response, but also my screen is usually blocked by the bright tangerine top handle. One thing that I definitely would like to suggest to everyone at Port Keys is how about we implement some sort of lock function? Because something that is very concerning to me is that most of the functions that you can program to the front lever, they are controlled by the wheel directly under your thumb. So if you're not careful and you're moving around or you're adjusting the camera or just simply sitting here like this with your hand on the grip, you could very easily accidentally change any camera settings and not even realize you've changed it. So on the jobs that I was on, that's really the main reason why I set the middle position of the front lever to control the focus motor. Because for one, if you're working on set with a first AC or you're using manual cine lenses, then you know, you're know you not even gonna be using that tool. So in my scenario, that was kind of like a lock position. So until Porky's does implement some sort of lock function, I would highly recommend setting the middle position of the front lever on your key grip to something arbitrary that doesn't really apply to your setup. <laughs> Now, as far as rigging goes, Port Keys does help you out in that regard because they do include a rosette wheel in the kit and it's actually a really nice one and that allows you to put it anywhere you desire onto your camera cage. However, one thing I would highly recommend is once you do tighten your key grip onto the rosette wheel, use a little long Allen key to stick it into the wheel there and give it an extra little tighten just to be safe. Something not impressive about this key grip is the ergonomics. 
it is not exactly the most comfortable piece of gear. Keep in mind that when my camera is fully rigged out on real jobs, it's a pretty heavy rig. It weighs around 15 pounds. So that could just be because the size of my rig, maybe the key grip is more comfortable for much smaller and tinier setups. Because no matter where I installed the rosette wheel, I just could not get this key grip in a comfortable position. In other words, depending on the size of your rig, it is not going to be comfortable holding your camera by the key grip alone, meaning one-handed. Now they do include this little leather strap that you can tether onto there, which is nice, I guess, but they also include this little tiny piece of leather with snaps. And at first I wasn't quite sure what that was exactly for. But once I installed the key grip onto the side of my camera and picked it up, I quickly noticed the biggest design flaw, in my opinion, of this key grip. Once you grab the key grip, there is this little piece of plastic, which I'm gonna show you a close up of instead, and it really digs into the pressure point between your thumb and pointer finger. So I assume that's why last minute they included this little tiny piece of leather. It definitely seems like an oversight, something they just threw in the box last minute because I think they realize that this piece of plastic is going to cause people a lot of pain. So I imagine that will be the very first thing that has some changes made to it in the Mark II version. If that's not what that little tiny piece of leather was intended for, I would love to know what it actually is for because in my scenario, it's actually saving my hand. Again, my rig does weigh around 15 pounds. Other than that, after using this key grip in a professional setting for only two days, there was this little rubber lining that already started falling out. So, you know, that is a little concerning to me just from an aesthetic point of view. You know, only two full days on set and it's already kind of falling apart. Now that little rubber piece probably isn't essential to the functionality of the key grip, but build quality is definitely something to take note of. You know, because dirt or little droplets of sweat from your hand could easily fall down into those now exposed holes and who knows, possibly damage the inner electronics. But also, I don't know how this thing is made. For all I know, it just falls down into a, you know, little hollow plastic bin. I, I don't know if it's actually, you know, a direct line to electronics. I'm just saying the build quality seems to be a little poor, but definitely for me, I think they need to go back to the drawing board when it comes to ergonomics and comfort. Now let's return to that topic of using the key grip with the Tilt the Nucleus M follow focus motor. Now this was actually very appealing to me because very often, as I'm sure a lot of you do as well, you find yourself in smaller budgets or different shooting situations where you're required to pull your own focus. Now, even though Port Keys did make it an option to connect to a Tilt the motor and control it, they did it, however, in a kind of proprietary way. So in your own Tilta M kit, assuming you own one of these things, you will inevitably have one of these seven pin male to male Limo cables. The downside is the cable port for the focus motor is a five pin male connection. So not only is it a male connector rather than a female connector, but it's also two pins less. So that will require you to purchase an additional proprietary port keys cable this cable is an additional purchase of $55. Now, if you only have the Nucleus Nano motor, that is a much smaller motor, and I guess that's why that cable is only an additional cost of $25. Either way, if you do plan on using your key grip with any tilt -a motor you do need to keep that extra cost in mind because on top of the proprietary cable that you will have to buy, you also will still need the $99 dummy battery. <laughs> Now here's the most important and dangerous part of this entire video because Porky's did have to send me a second key grip. What they failed to tell me is that the key grip not only can control the motor, but it also powers it at the same time. So not knowing this, me being the dummy that I am, I guess, apparently, I already had power running to the tilt motor on a separate D-tap. Anyways, as soon as I connected the key grip to the tilt motor this happened. It was just smoking. It was just smoking. You can almost see the smoke right there. I mean, I, as soon as the as soon as the nucleus motor turned on, it just started smoking. And it blew the key grip. So that is something to be aware of because Portkeys does not supply any instructions on this, not only with the packaging of the key grip, nor the proprietary $55 cable, which I imagine, hopefully now, uh, imagine certainly now since this video is now published that Porky's is already making changes to that. Now, luckily nothing happened to my Komodo nor the tilt motor but it did fry the key grip. 
So how do you avoid blowing your key grip? Well, first of all, you have to purchase the $99 dummy battery, and then do not run a separate D-tap to your tilt-a-motor. Just simply connect the $55 proprietary port keys cable from the key grip to the motor. Then you can control the motor and power it at the same time. <laughs> Now, the funny thing is, before Port Key sent me this key grip for review, I had already been using this Tilta Max control handle, and I specifically bought this for one man band kind of projects. Now, this thing is actually really rad, and you can still have wireless record control with this as well. You just have to run a cable from the EXT port on the Komodo to the Tilta follow focus motor. So, obviously, I was very interested in comparing the performance of this Tilta Max handle to the Port Key's key grip. The biggest difference right off the bat is the tilt the handle is 100% wireless. It does not require a cable from the grip to the motor, and it also runs off of batteries. So enough about the tilt the handle for now. Let's talk about what happens when you combine the key grip with the tilt the M motor. For one, that $55 port keys cable is pretty damn short. So that is something to keep in mind, because remember, the key grip cannot connect to the tilt the motor wirelessly. Also, it has to be using the dummy battery to even work with the tilt the motor. So now that's two separate cables running to your wireless key grip. And as far as performance goes in terms of polling focus, well, now that was pretty wonky. Now, this is gonna be a little hard to convey across a YouTube video because a lot of it is more of the feel of it, which I'm sure a lot of you, uh, certainly any first AC, would instantly know what I'm referring to when I say that. Okay, so now how this works is you can pull it off of this, right? You can pull focus off of this little wheel here, the front wheel, with your finger. You can see the lens turning and you can see me pulling here. To pay attention to the motor, while I'm pulling focus off the grip, because it tends to want to jump. Another problem is what just happened to me, I tend, oh, there it wigged out, because the front little lever is very easy to switch. And now it came disconnected, now it's not doing anything. It's just completely dead. And that's just because I accidentally switched the motor. Okay, there it is. So that's interesting. You would think you think the function would be motor, but it's not. You have to set it to focus plus minus. And right here. But now when I try to go like, see it, there's no like, you'd have to get in there and figure out how to dial in the torque settings because it's really hard to torque. You see how bad it's ripping that big, and that's a big cine lens. So imagine what that's gonna do to your little vintage lenses right there. It just kicks back. It doesn't let me go all the way. And I've already calibrated it. I've already calibrated the motor. See, I can go all the way, but for whatever reason, when I first start going, see there it hiccups. It doesn't do like a smooth transition pull. It's just kind of, see there I can get through it, but you don't get a big nice, well see, when I try to do a big nice long pull, it kind of retracts a little bit. See right there, like it just dead ends for some reason. Like why did it stop? I'm trying to go the whole way. See, it's I don't know how good this is going to be for cine lenses. It's just it's just highly sensitive, and the torque is a little out of the out of. It's just a little insane torque. So let's get into the key grip and see if we can adjust the torque. Now, at the time of this recording, unfortunately, there is no way to go inside of the key grip and change the sensitivity of the focus wheel. You can change the direction, but not the sensitivity. Now, as far as the motors go, I always keep my tilt -to m motors on the lowest torque setting. However, with both the tilt -to wheel and the tilt -to grip, I can go inside of both of these units and adjust the knob's torque, which is essentially the sensitivity, and I do have it set to the lowest, which is 30%. Okay, so now, we got the tilt the max controller, okay? It instantly connects, no cables, nothing. And now you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, and you'll probably see immediately, I mean, look how much smoother this is. I mean, this is sexy smooth. It's an insane difference. And I know it probably is hard to, you know, it's probably hard to come across in a video, but I mean, well, for one, I mean, I can just stand here looking at it, but more about the feel of it too. Do you know what I mean? It's like the fee and essentially this is the same kind of wheel that Port Keys has on their key grip, 
but it just it's just way more intuitive. I I don't know if that's even the right word. It just really seems, you know, it just has a nice smooth pull. It's not jumping. It's not hiccuping. It's just nice, nice and butter here. So at the end of the day, the tilt the grip is going to be the clear winner for me, mainly just for better performance. But also it's gonna cost you an additional $155 that's before tax and shipping to even make your key grip work with your tilt the M motor. Meanwhile, this tilt the grip is only 212 bucks. And keep in mind, you can still have wireless record control with this tilt the grip. You just have to connect the tilt the M motor to the camera. <laughs> So now the big question that every YouTube channel seems to ask at the end. So I thought I'd jump on the bandwagon even though I loathe bandwagons, but some things just need to be addressed. The question you already know, who is this Portkey's key grip for? Well, in my opinion, I think it's for people that primarily use electronic lenses or, you know, autofocus lenses with manual override switches. You know, one man band kind of shooters, live event, wedding videographers, concert guys, those types of people. Because in a professional commercial setting, which I use this key grip on two different commercial shoots, I gotta be honest with you guys, I did find it a little annoying. The biggest reason being, I am not a fan of the ergonomics. Also, this little front lever that controls the basic camera functions, it moves very, very easily. And another one of my pet peeves is there is not a lock function when you have this wheel directly under your thumb. I think that was a huge oversight. To be honest with you guys, when I was using this on my Komodo, I was only using it for the record control. I already had the Mutiny IO record button, which directly taps into my Bright Tangerine Smart NATO Rail. So the way the Bright Tangerine NATO Rail works is that on the bottom of the NATO Rail, it actually has the same exact connectors that are found on the red outrigger handle. And then as you'll see here, it has a run stop port to control the camera. And that's where the Mutiny IO record button plugs directly into. So the one cool thing to me when combining the Portkey's key grip with the Mutiny IO record button was now I had two record buttons on each side of the front of the camera. And that was kind of cool. Now this Portkey's key grip does cost 400 bucks, but you must keep in mind it is an additional $155 if you plan on using the key grip with your tilt the motors. So just as a quick comparison, the Bright Tangerine Smart NATO Rail is $145 and the Mutiny IO record button is $120. So that's $265 total for the Mutiny IO Bright Tangerine combo versus the $400 of the Port Keys key grip. Well, the biggest difference being that, well, the Port Keys key grip is obviously wireless. It's also a handle, albeit not a very comfortable one, but yes, at the end of the day, it is technically a handle. And on top of the record control, it also controls all of your camera's basic functions. So at the end of the day, I do still feel that the Port Keys key grip is actually the most bang for your buck. I just think as of right now, at the time of the recording of this video, Porky still has a lot of kinks to work out in a future firmware update. At the end of the day though, the ergonomics is the biggest deal breaker for me. However, keep in mind, I have to say it again, when this rig is completely built out, as you can see in these BTS videos, it's quite large. A lot of my friends, you know, send me, you know, jokes via Instagram DM, but I don't care. You know, when I'm shooting a professional project, I need this camera to be able to work the way I need it to work. So what does that mean? Well, I need a big top handle on it so I can control it when it's on the easy rig. It adds, I need to add a little extra girth and weight to it so it's not floating around and showing micro jitters that you get from a mirrorless camera. As well as, you know, I need to have things on here like my monitor and a wireless video transmitter. People sending me goofy comments comments about the size of the Komodo, um, you know, well, that's your own thing. You, you probably just love running around with a little camera in your hand. With all that being said, this little tiny GDU Derringer handle, I actually prefer using this over this port keys key grip. That seems crazy to me. How can this thing be more comfortable than that thing? I don't know. I have no idea. Maybe because it's actual real wood. Maybe it's because I have little tiny piano player hands. I don't know. At the end of the day, it is what it is. Once again, another review that kind of turned into a roast. 
But hey guys, you know that's the reality of what we do here on the Dog Times Productions Justin Phillip YouTube channel. There's a certain level of transparency that you get here on this channel that you will not find anywhere else. I'm not in the business of kissing any companies, but I'm not in the business of, you know, creating sponsorships and all these things with all these random companies. I could care less. What am I in the business of? Well, my Dog Times Patreon members already know. I am in the business of creating indie film right? From a, uh, commercials, music videos, short films, feature films. This is what we do. We are storytellers, right? I want tools that will allow me to tell the story as efficiently as possible, right? Uh, so that's what it's all about. As always, thank you for watching. I gotta give a shout out to all of my awesome Dog Times Productions Patreon members. Special thanks to the members of the producers tier. That's Mike Skinner, Fred Parr, and David Carroll. As also our Pro Tips member, Visit VR. And check it out, guys. We have these rad new Dog Time shirts. I just handed out a lot of these when we wrapped a short film that I was the cinematographer on. They do say Dog Time's crew on the back. We got all these wild new shirts and things. And I've been going through lots of different options of samples, different kinds of fabric that we're trying to find with this weird little spring store. Uh, so, you know, we're still working out getting the best possible options to provide to you guys. But I just think if you're looking for a way to support the channel, um, you know, the merch is where it's at. You get a little token and it's, you know, it's just a one-time thing. So uh, just throwing that out there because we don't have sponsors on this channel here, obviously, because I tend to speak my mind. So that's going to do it on this one. This was a behemoth. Um, you know, no shade to Porky's. You know, they're doing the best they can, and this is why we do the reviews, right? Uh, just test it out, and, you know, you can, guys, you can always count on me. I'm never going to hold anything back. That's why it took me over a month to get this review out, because I definitely insist on using these things on real-world shoots. Well, I'm not exactly working five times a week on real-world shoots, right? So, you know, I just have to wait along for those things to come. But luckily, I was able to bring it on two different uh, professional commercial settings. So, you know, that was enough for me to, to see how it was. Okay, that's going to be it. I have to get to physical therapy. Uh, we will see you in the next one. Holy cow, that's a big fat wrap. Pro tip, if you got a greasy face like me, you just use a Kimtech wipe on your face. These are, if you don't know about Kimtech wipes, well then you just haven't been on the Justin Phillip YouTube channel long enough. These are the number one tool for cleaning your lenses. And uh, you should never use microfibers on your glass ever again. Okay, let's get into this. Nicely done. Let's do let's do a series. Bada bing, bada bing. Oh wait, let's okay, let's tail slate this real quick. I wanna yes. do another one just so we have a couple. Okay. How's the splash? So you gotta go really well. <laughs>